Well, howdy, folks. This is the, might be the last time, or at least for a while, that I'm using my, uh, my setup right now. I'm actually going to, I purchased a, a field flattener. Right now I got the field flattener focal reducer, and I just recently purchased uh, just a field flattener uh, for my telescope. And because I want to do some narrow, or not narrow band imaging, I want to uh, do some uh, imaging of the uh, uh, galaxies, the small galaxies. So I'll try my hand at that. But anyways, uh, right now I'm shooting Lowry's Nebula, which is SH2261. It's in Orion, or just above uh, Orion. Get another one Exposure of those. Started. Um, uh, nebula, and it's uh, HA Nebula. I've already got some RGB on it, and I'm just going to do you know, maybe about four hours on it of HA, if I can get it. Uh, I'll probably get like a couple hours tonight, maybe a couple hours tomorrow night if it's clear. So, anyways, I'll check back with you after I'm uh, processing this thing. So, I don't even know when you're going to see this video. But uh, everything looks uh, okay. Uh, guiding started off horribly when I you know, just did this. It was way up in, like around 1 or above 1. But that happens every once in a while. And then it'll start settling down. And this is what I normally get. Uh 0.43 that's what I'm that's that's what I normally get somewhere around there when it gets when it gets above when it gets near one and something something's not right but usually it corrects itself anyways we'll see you in a while okay well hello everybody so it's a couple weeks later uh, so I'm back uh, I'm gonna show you quickly uh, what my images uh, look like how the image came out and I'm not going to show you exactly, you know, this is a like, quick overview of what I did uh, processing-wise. Anyway, so here's the, here's how the red came out. And it came out pretty well. Here's the blue, green, and finally the HA. So, anyways, this uh, was after I, uh, I, this is how the actual images came out. I didn't do anything on the, any of these images yet except for uh, cropped them. So they're all the same size now. So that's pretty much what I always would do. The next thing I did was I took the RGB and I combined it. And I wound up with this. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And I also, I took the HA, and um, what I did with the HA, as well as this RGB, I did a, not an automatic background extraction, I did a dynamic background extraction. So, let me show you what I did here. So, these are my parameters that I use for uh, background extraction, for dynamic background extraction, and some of you that do it already probably are looking at these, uh, having a horrified look on here, but I actually, I, I, I've done experiments with it, and um, I came across somebody else who recommended using these settings, and I tried it, and it came out pretty well. So I took the tolerance, put it at 2, the relaxation at 6, I left this alone, and I put the sampling radius at 98. And I, uh, of course, I did the subtraction. I press generate, and you end up getting something like this. And then, of course, I just moved all some of these out of the way, and I deleted them, and all sorts of whatnot. So after I did the, let me see if I can delete this or get this out of here. Come on, you want to save it? No. Sorry about this. There we go. All right, so what did that image look like after I did the dynamic background extraction? Well, for the RGB, it came out like this. And for the HA, it looked like this. So it came out pretty well. All right, then what I would do or did is I took that, this RGB image, and I... Come over to here, and this thing splits it. It splits it back into 
uh, get rid of this. It splits it back into just uh, the RGB. Now, why on earth would I split it back into RGB? Well, you know, what I did it when I moved it into RGB in the first place was I did the background extraction. So I took care of all three of them all at once. And then I did um, uh, some color calibration, a little bit of color calibration and stuff like that. And uh, what I did next was I combined the HA into the red channel. And I used pixel math to do that. So here's pixel math. And pixel math is a very, very powerful tool in PixInsight. You can do many things with it. The reason I used pixel math and not just a straight combination algorithm was because I like to play with it. So with pixel math, you can put all the RGB in there. And I did that. And I didn't like the way it looked. So I did a blend. So I have a, my blend was 50% uh, HA and 50% RGB, I mean a red, and that gave me the uh, best um, color. At least I think it gave me the best uh, color. Gave me this uh, for my image. So this is what it looked like uh, using PixInsight. The next thing I did um, was I did some denoising, and I may have done denoising earlier on this. I actually can't remember. But at any rate, I did another uh, denoise function. And what I do for denoise, uh, one thing I do is before I run this, is I make a mask of this. And so I go into mask generation. And uh, no, I don't. Sorry, I don't do that. I come up here and do the mask. I just press this button and it'll make a luminosity mask. I'll show it to you what it looks like. All right, so it makes a, it creates a luminosity mask. And actually, I don't, yeah, I, most people just put this right in here, and I do this occasionally. Um, but sometimes, or for this image, what I did is I actually uh, made this mask more uh, contrasty by using a, um, um, by a curve stretch. So I made the darker is darker, the lighter is lighter, and so I gave it a stronger masking abilities. I guess, for lack of better words. And so, and I can delete that or put that there. Oops. There we go. Now it's protecting the nebula uh, more, and the part that I want, the denoise, it'll uh, uh, denoise that area. So, anyways, this is what I use. I've been having some good luck with DGV denoise. And what I usually do is I do the lightness. This color portion, I do this, the strength at 8, the edge protection around 2, and the smoothness around 5. That's my default noise. And then I'll do it again on the this part where it says LAB, and I press chrominance. And I leave it at 7 and 2, although sometimes I do adjust these as well, but this is my default. So that's what I did, and I wound up um, getting, uh, I think this is the image that I, uh, yeah, this is the image. Okay, so this is a uh, denoised. So now many of you guys might do a lot more in PixInsight, and I don't know PixInsight super well, and so what I do is I do the rest of or more of the processing in uh, Photoshop. So here's that image brought into Photoshop. And I did some more stuff, more noise reduction, more um, contrast uh, development, uh, more color coordination, just a whole bunch of, a whole slew of things in Photoshop. And wound up getting this. So this is what it looked like, uh, the overall image. And, um, you know, I, I like this star in here, these stars in here, but I also don't like the stars in, in there. So I actually uh, cropped them out after I did some more stuff and wound up this for my image. So anyways, 
and, and I adjusted that nebula, and it came out pretty well. I, I was really, really impressed with this, uh, with this object. And as I said, it's uh, probably my last image for a little while, at least with the focal reducer, because I'm going to use a field flattener, start taking uh, flattener, and start taking pictures of some galaxies. So yeah, this is a Lowers Nebula or Lowers Nebula. I'm not sure how to actually say the name. It's named after Harold Lower, who in 1939 with his son Charles uh, discovered this. Um, and it's not imaged all that much. Uh, it's getting more popular, though. It's uh, Like I said, it's, it's in Orion. So Orion has a slew of objects uh, that get overlooked because of the um, more famous uh, objects in Orion. Anyways, that's all I have for you, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.